Hello again everybody and welcome back once again to Life in the Woods Renaissance Field Guide. Today we're going to be talking about gardens and how to best survive your first few nights in hungry mode. As you all know, hungry mode can be kind of intimidating, um, but one of the most important things when you're starting off is actually foraging. And depending on whether or not you're going to be playing as a vegan, sometimes even just a little mushroom on the ground can be a lifesaver. But what we're going to be talking about today are the different types of gardens and how you can identify them in the wild. So I've set up this little gallery here of all the different kinds of gardens on the ground and then also kind of in an item frame so it's easier to see them without them wiggling around. But let's go through all of them one by one. First and foremost we have the berry garden which is pretty obvious and looks pretty identifiable, pretty noticeable from afar I would think. Um, but these ones usually draw blackberries, strawberries, raspberries, blueberries, candleberries, basically berries. <laughs> it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, they can be found pretty much anywhere. We've got the desert garden here. I think the only thing it drops is cactus fruit, and I think the only place that the cactus fruit can actually be grown is on sand. Usually, by the name, as you can tell, they're usually found in deserts. Next we have the grass garden. Similarly, it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it usually has things like hay, oats, barley, different types of grains, basically. I think a, probably grain garden would have been a better name, but grass garden will do. Gourd garden, that's another one that looks pretty obvious like food. Um, same kind of thing, it usually has the different kinds of like melons, gourds, squash, stuff like that. Um, mostly vegetables, I don't think there's any fruits in this one. I know some of them have a mix of fruits and vegetables. Next one we have is the ground garden. Once again, this is very similar to the gourd garden, it has a lot of the um, tuberous kind of things like potatoes and sweet potatoes and stuff like that but generally plants that grow underground. Herb garden. This one's a real variety and not very good for long term or at least uh, survival in the beginning. When you're starting out and you're looking for something to keep yourself going or to start a new garden Herb garden is a pretty scary one to find because it only usually has things like tea leaves, mustard seeds, and stuff like that, which are really helpful in later game recipes, but in the beginning, kind of hard to live off of. Leafy garden, uh, pretty, <laughs> pretty descriptive there. Um, very similar to stock garden, I find it difficult to tell the difference between the two of them and mix them up all the time. I know they look different and they're, they have different things in them, but <laughs> I always confuse the two of them. Um, but both of these are very vegetable oriented. Then we've got the mushroom garden. Pretty obvious what comes in that one. I think there's only three kinds of mushrooms. There's the white mushroom, the brown mushroom, and the red mushroom. Most of the other kinds of mushrooms um, can only be found through the plant mega pack and these are all harvest craft um, food mod gardens. So you won't find all the other plant mega pack mushrooms in this garden, um, but you can grow all of these as well. Uh, there are more mushrooms you can find from plant mega pack that are edible, which is pretty handy. Once again, stock garden, very vegetable oriented. Uh, I, I can never remember what actually comes in these two. <laughs> the textile garden, I believe the only thing it actually drops is cotton, but it's incredibly important and very useful, especially if you're just trying to make a bag or something like that, um, used in a lot of recipes. So if you can get yourself a cotton or textile garden early on, it's very helpful. Tropical garden. As evidenced by the name and the picture, it looks kind of like a pineapple and that's the kind of stuff that comes in it. Usually the fruits and usually found in the more jungly biomes. This one that's kind of glitching through the floor here, I tried to put it on water but it didn't want to work. Um, this is the water garden and a really interesting kind of variety of things comes in the water garden. So even I kind of keep a lookout for those. Um, but it has a variety of water creatures between snails and turtles and prawns and all kinds of stuff like that. And then it also has cranberries, which are a water um, crop, and rice. So really interesting one and easy to spot because <laughs> they're in the water. But sometimes you can actually get those right on the edge of a beach. So. This is all the different kinds, oh, excuse me, oh, and some ground gardens. 
This is all the different kinds of gardens that you can find in the wild. There are other fruits and vegetables that can grow um, just from biomes of plenty, from plant mega pack, as well as all the different kinds of fruit trees. But these are the different ground gardens um, that you can find and forage early on in the game and are basically essential to your survival. Now, the biggest thing that I do want to tell you, other than just how to recognize them in the wild, because you will want to remember what these look like. So get a good look, start to recognize these. If you're going to recognize any plants in the world, uh, recognize these. And then there's a couple, um, a couple bad ones I should probably show you later on. But these are the gardens that you can collect and forage. But probably the most important thing that I should tell you, especially if you don't have a backpack yet, um, is if you left click and punch the garden it'll open the garden and all the food that's inside will come out usually three items and it's a randomized variety of whatever usually comes in that garden but if you right click the garden specifically with an empty hand or like a tool in your hand um, it'll actually just pop the garden off the ground and you'll pick it up and if you're running low on space, it's hugely, hugely important because each of these gardens has a huge number of different uh, types of food that can be dropped from it. And if you just open all the gardens and pick up all the different types of food off the ground, you'll very quickly run out of space. So if you're off in the world foraging, especially without having a backpack, um, and you're not starving at the moment, you don't need the food desperately in your belly, then definitely right click on the garden just to save inventory space. And I'll show you that just now. Okay, so since we have these nice handy dandy ones here, we're back into survival mode. If you right click, just pops it right off the ground at this wonderful little ground garden. And you can actually just plant it right back down, especially if you want to come back for it later, or you're just trying to make some space in your inventory real quick or something like that. But if you left click and punch, it actually just opens up the garden and drops whatever was in it. And as you can see there, between two gardens, I immediately got six different types of food. So I've got a beet, rutabaga, turnip, sweet potato, carrot, and a peanut, which is actually really helpful to make some stuff later on. So there you have it. Those are the basics on the harvest craft gardens that you can find around in the world and a huge importance to any new world starting off, especially in hungry mode um, and just trying to survive until you can settle down. I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you have any other suggestions, requests, or tutorials you'd like to see on the field guide here, let me know. For now, I'm just going to enjoy this peanut butter sandwich, and I will see you guys next time.